Today is about clamping force and learning how to improve the mold. Welcome to another episode. Here's a better view of how the clamping system works. There's the arm, and you can see when I close the arm, it pushes the mold halves together. And there's this block here. This block is movable. There are two screws, one here, and then one on the other side. So if I loosen them, I can move this back and forth. Now the problem I had before is that when it's uh, in this far in, these two screws, which are designed to keep this block from moving, are not long enough to engage. Even if they were long enough to engage, they might flex a little bit. So I have a couple choices. One choice is to have a block that I put in here. But the other choice, which is the one I decide to go with, is to get a couple of pieces of one inch thick aluminum that are six inches wide and put them in here instead. Doing that will allow me to have this, this uh, block moved back and engage with the screws. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set that up now. I'm going to pull out the mold. Actually, I don't have the mold in here now, so I just have some blocks and I'm going to pull those out. And then I'm going to put these blocks in here. And we'll see where we end up with these blocks and the mold in here. So I'll grab the mold and you can see we, we still don't have quite as much distance as I want. Okay, once that's, those screws are loosened, you can see this moves quite freely. And I'm going to insert some of the spacers I mentioned before on either side of the mold. All right, now once I've done that, you can see that uh, I need to unscrew these so that I can close it. All right. It's almost to the point where I can close it, and I'm going to have to move the camera. Okay, the idea is to get it so that, all right, that's too tight, so I can't close it. So I have to adjust that it's until the block is just so, so I can barely tight uh, close it. Okay, that seems pretty good right there. Maybe a little bit more. Yep, okay, I'll try that. It takes a lot of work to uh, close it, but that's the idea. So now I have it in that position. I'll go ahead and uh, tighten these two screws. When I set up a new mold, the chances are pretty high that the nozzle will not be centered over the hole in the mold. And let's see if I can get some better light here. Uh, so right here is the hole in the mold. So what I want to do is loosen the screw here. And once I do that, you can see I can move the, the entire uh, top. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see I can move the entire top of the assembly back and forth. And so what I want to do is make sure that the nozzle is centered over the parting line of the mold. And then once it is, I can tighten that screw, make sure it's still centered, and then we're good to go. Now it's a matter of turning the heater on, waiting for the plastic to heat up, and then we'll give it another try. Okay, well, that's quite good, actually. It turns out that you know, we have everything filled here except for a little bit there. 
but this is good enough to actually uh, try out. So I'm gonna see if I can make a few more. This is a success. You can see I was able to make three parts. I stopped after making three parts because this was enough to prove that I can uh, do them repeatedly. There are some issues I need to address now. And so I want to show you a few things. First of all, I mentioned the, uh, the sync marks. You can see there's a sync mark right there. It doesn't impact the functionality of the part, but it's certainly something that uh, I'd like to uh, improve. And one way to do that probably is to uh, have one of the gates near the ends so that I can apply pressure there and uh, fill the part. And one of the reasons there's an issue is because there's a large boss on the back. So this section is a lot thicker than other parts of the mold. And since the plastic has to come here and flow over, it's hard to get quite enough pressure there to fill it. The other side, it's not quite as large of a boss, so it's okay. The other thing I mentioned is that uh, in this section here, you can see that uh, it didn't fill all the way where there should be a screw hole. That's something I, th uh, I have some ideas to fix it. I think I can uh, have the, the screw boss come out this way a little bit, and I'll show you that in CAD. And uh, the same thing over here, this one didn't fill at all. The other thing that I'm going to do before I post this video, so there will be a link uh, down below, to a question I'll post on the Autodesk forum, uh, asking for you know, better recipes for where I should put the, the gates and how large the runner should be, how large the gate should be, that sort of thing. Uh, the final thing is, here's that small blemish, which is pretty small. Again, because this was a test mold, no big deal. Uh, I'm obviously going to have to make this again. And then one final thing, I'll see if I can get this to uh, focus, is uh, right up here, uh, this is a little too small and too steep to be able to pull out the mold uh, easily. So what I want to do is I want to add quite a bit of uh, draft on the bottom side. The top side I want it to be, or maybe it's the other way around. Uh, that's right, the bottom side I want it to be completely flat, and then the top side I can add a lot more draft. And then the final thing I'll want to do for an actual mold is put ejector pins along here to make it easier to push them out and then probably some ejector pins uh, there and there. But again, this is a test mold, so no big deal. Uh, there's a little bit of alignment issue between the mold halves, I think. Yep, you can see they're not perfectly aligned. Uh, but again, that's something that uh, I can fix when I'm not making so many mistakes on the mold. Anyway, I'm very pleased. Um, this is a success. I'm going to uh, try to uh, assemble this along with some of my 3D printed parts to uh, see how that goes uh, before I make the next mold half. So now that I tried to assemble it, I've run into a few issues. Uh, one is that the, the recess uh, right, like, uh, right here for the screw is too tight for the screw. So the screw doesn't go all the way in. I'll have to fix that. Uh, another thing I discovered is that the screw hole for this tiny screw that holds the spring uh, is also too tight. So I had to ream that out with a, uh, a hobby knife to be able to put that screw in. But it also didn't recess the way it's supposed to. So it's uh, sticking proud as you can see. This one did work, so uh, I'm going to go check the geometry, figure out what's going on. Part of this may be a result of the problems I was having with backlash because I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but those holes are not quite round. Uh, so that's probably some of the difference. I think I'm also going to take some measurements, but uh, at this point I'm going to uh, call it a success. I think I might check the clips there and there to see if they fit. Uh, and then I'm going to start doing um, some CAD work and uh, setting up to make the next mold. So one of the suggestions that I got is that my runner was not thick enough to be able to provide enough pressure to the gate. So I made this runner quite a bit thicker. Uh, this one is, uh, the sprue I think was uh, 0.2 inches radius and this was uh, point, no, point 0.1 inches radius and point, uh, 0.125 inches radius. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but you can see it, it is noticeably different in terms of how large it is. Uh, that means that I'm getting a lot more pressure to the gates. And by getting more pressure to the gate, it means that I need 
the total injection pressure that I need is going to be lower. The pressure inside the cavity is going to be about the same, so I still need the same clamping force. But making this change meant that I could drop it from 110 PSI or 105 PSI here down to this required, I think, about 65 PSI. So uh, the other thing that he's suggesting, which I'm going to have to do in another video, is changing it to have a single gate that I think feeds in right to here. Uh, so I'm going to try uh, some test molds and uh, see what happens. See you next time.